sewers. In today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to sew bias binding onto curves and I've got an example here. I'm Colleen Geely and this is Fashion Sewing Blog TV. Here we have bias binding on an outward curve and an inward curve. We use bias binding for two purposes really. One to um, cover the raw edges and in this, this example it's covering the raw edges and it's also used as a decorative feature. Here I've got an example of an outward curve and what I've done is, hopefully you can see, I've marked it in pencil. This is going to be the seam line, seam allowance of 1.5 centimetres or 5 eighths of an inch and at about 3 millimetres I've stay stitched all the way around. This is just to stabilise the area because we're working on a curve. Now I'm going to get my bias binding which is shop bought and I'm going to open one fold and place it onto the right side, onto the right side of the fabric in position to where I would actually have the seam allowance and then I'll pin all the way around opening up the fold go all the way around make sure that's in position just a couple more pins and one more and then that is done and then what I'll do then is take it to my sewing machine so there we have it all nicely pinned into position I'm using contrasting threads and I'm going to be sewing on the crease line of the actual bias binding so let's go first but I'm using my large stitch just for this demonstration but um, you just use your regular stitch that you would use for sewing your project and I'll pull my pins out as I go so just follow the curve round just go at a slow pace there's no need for you to to hurry necessarily because you want to make sure that you stay within that actual crease line of the bias One more pin to go. Right, so I have to make sure put it down, needle down, put it to the end, reverse, take my work out, my thread scissors, set that, and there we have it. The next step once you've actually sewn uh, the bias binding to your fabric, so remember it's the right side of the binding on the right side of your fabric, is to trim away the excess seam allowance to the same level as your actual bias binding. You can actually do this before you actually apply a bias binding, it depends how you want to work really. So there we've got it and then the next step will be to press just slightly to my work over along the seam line you've created, you've just stitched. So I'm going to take that to my ironing board and then I'm going to get the tip of my iron and just run it right across the actual stitching all the way around just to help set the, ba the bias binding into place. I've now got my work facing me on the right side and I've now pressed the actual seam. The next thing to do is turn your work to the right side and you're going to be making sure that the vice binding, as you can see it's starting to form its shape around the curve and you're going to place the other side of the bias binding on the right side, on the wrong side, I'm sorry, and then you're going to place a pin into the right side of your fabric just alongside the edge of the bias binding but making sure that it goes into the bias binding onto the right wrong side like so and you do that all the way around you may be able to feel I, I can actually feel as I'm going around that I'm actually working into the bias 
spaniel and you just want it to make sure that it's a, a couple of millimeters away so you work all put all the pins all the way around and then you take it to a sewing machine and I'll show you how that's done I'm using my large stitch here you can stay with your regular stitch it's all dependent on your sewing project and I'm going to stitch very close to the bias binding but not onto the bias binding just go slow I would recommend even I would if I was doing this technique will stay with the speed I'm going at the moment because you really want to make sure that it gets in the actual seam but not onto the bias binding itself I think you may have just done that there but I'll show you that at the end and then you just continue going all the way around I now completed sewing on the machine and hopefully you can see there is a row of black stitching along here. Now if you're using the same thread as your fashion fabric or even your bias binding you wouldn't be able to see that. And I've also used a larger stitch but you can stay with your regular stitch that you'll be using. I'll just show you the reverse side and that's how it looks like on the wrong side. Now you can actually make sure that the thread that I've used here obviously for this demonstration I've used white but you could also use um, whatever colour your bias binding is so you can have two different colours so one on top could be a different colour and the one underneath could be matching your bias binding. I'm now going to show you how to put the bias binding on an inward curve. The same principle applies to the outward curve. Um, what I've actually done here is trim away the seam allowance on the outward curve I didn't so it's all about choice so I'm going to align my bias binding against the raw edge of the curve and pin that into place all the way around just make sure that it's matching against the raw edge of the curve and I'll continue doing it all the way around and then I'll show you how to sew it on the sewing machine um, now I've got my machine needle in the crease of the bias binding and because we're working with an inward curve I can actually make sure that I stretch the curve so you've got a more or less a straight line in which to sew along. Take my pins out as I sew, make sure it's in the crease of the actual bias binding. Curve there, keep that straight. Do a little bit of manipulation there to make sure it lies flat. And just keep on going. So I'm going to go right to the end and then I'll show you the next stage. The seam is now sewn, and the next step is to actually use the tip of your iron and just press along the actual stitching line. And then turn your work to the right side and then you're going to cover your raw edge with the bias binding and make sure it, quite, it feels quite firm over the, over the edge and you're going to get your pins and place them on the right side and you should be pinning into the bias binding on the wrong side and I'm going to keep on going until I come to the end. I've now pinned it all into place, this is the right side. I'll give you a view of what it looks like on the wrong side. So the pin is more or less indicating where the stitch line is going to go. So I'm now going to take that to my machine and show you how to do it. Now I've already started stitching, I'm halfway through and um, we're actually at the deeper curve here and if you feel as though you are actually going to be going into the actual bias binding you can always use a hand wheel just to help you along put your needle down and then just turn your work so that you, you feel a lot more comfortable or more in control right, hand wheel again needle down pin out foot up just turn it slightly down again so remember, you need to take control. Right, it's going a little bit offline again, so I'm going to have my needle down, cut up, turn my work. You can, um, if you wish, straighten it out a little bit, but not too much, because you still want to keep that curve 
and you want to have control and also it's good practice to actually sew in a curve rather than a straight line you just go as slow as you like and just remember to put your needle down use your hand wheel so you get it as close to the bias binding that you're not stitching onto the bias binding and then just keep turning and now we have the bias binding of an inward curve complete now remember it's doing two jobs it's covering the raw edge and it's also used as a decorative feature in this example this is the right side this is what it looks like on the wrong side and now I'm going to show you them both together so we've got inward curve and an outward curve Well I hope you found that video tutorial helpful. Remember bias binding can be used inside a garment to help with the construction of an inner part of the garment or it can be used as a decorative feature. Um, if you have any comments or questions please put them in the comment box below and I'll see you next time.